hi i'm sorry i think I, uh, some glitch happened i'm so sorry that i was not able to. um i'm live again is everyone there are my hello hello hi i'm so sorry my apologies my apologies uh that uh, i think there was some glitch with the connection i'm sorry we've lost some of your comments can you please comment there was a mom mom uh, mom 2020 somebody whose comment i had pinned also i'm while i'm still waiting for niyati to join there i have niyati should be here i'm sorry i apologize can you please post your comments in the question mark box so that we can answer while niyati is still joining hi i'm sorry i think there's something with i got hung network with, yes something with yeah. the network and we had a lot of interesting comments from uh, from people i had pinned one of the comment also yes uh and it was a very interesting comment very specific but i think let her join again and i th hope she answer uh, ask that question again so you were saying something near the while we yes. cut off yes yes so i was saying that when you have to explain sex to children if you are going to hesitate when you are explaining sex to children they are going to all me anyways feel very awkward about it so just explain it as if you are teaching them some scientific body part and body organs functions right uh, whenever you want to explain sex make sure that you have two illustrations with you the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system so that becomes very scientific and then when you tell them that you know when a man uh is excited his penis erects and this erected penis he puts into the woman's vagina this is called having sex so the sperms from the man's body goes into the woman's body meets with an egg fertilizes it and becomes a baby right now for this age this short explanation is enough they do not need to get into every explanation every scientific understanding of this process but in spite of that children are going to feel grossed out they don't like uh, thinking yeah. about one person putting another you know his genital into another person's body which we are already telling our children that it's not okay it's not right not to show and then to put it in can become a little uh, you know um, awkward for them if i have to what put it what if they want to try it out like I mean, I was, no. okay, I'm not an expert in this, so that's why I, when, when you know, when you tell me, yeah. with all my conditioning, also I'm thinking, oh my god, like how would I tell this to my child? And what if he yeah. goes to school next and says, "Mummy told me this, and now I want to try it out." Like, oh my yeah. god, like, yeah, yeah. No, these have been very common worries about parents, which I understand. I'm a parent of two children, right? And I understand yes, yes, that. So, yes. it, it, it. Your answer doesn't stop here. so after uh -huh. that i think first focus on how they are feeling about it the, rather than worrying about the world let it let first uh -huh. worry about how child has taken it in um uh -huh. so how do you feel listening to it or do you have any questions so once it once the child starts talking like you know what this is gross i don't want to talk about it you already know that the child will never try that he's already grossed out about it but if the child starts asking more questions or oh, then what or oh, then oh, what or oh, then curious. then you yes the curiosity so this is where you get the sign that is this something that i need to worry about so that is where you can say but beta if this happens now it may be a white lie over here but you have to say but do you remember the safe and unsafe touches that we've spoken about we do this only with that person who we want to share our lives with so right now some parents do use the word husband and wife after marriage which is okay to one extent but at the same time that also can become a block uh, for this generation who is going to think differently than us so i would yes. say leave it open Uh, and say that this is uh, for the partner you are going to share your life with you can trust this person because you're going to become uh, you know you're showing your vulnerable parts to this person so once you kind of like give that to the children see these children are very they're very small to understand all these things their minds are not going there it's because the society is talking about it everywhere every yes. tv show every cartoon every yes. that adult child in the bus everybody is talking about sex children are watching pornography at such a young age that is why your child is asking mm -hmm. so keep the answer simple let them know that there are consequences there are diseases there's pregnancy there's a lot that one needs to take care of and uh, only when they are ready after the age of 18 with the person who they want to spend their life with who they trust with their life only then go for it so that is a good moral lesson to give
I think you've explained a whole lot of stuff. In fact, I would request people that if you are really seriously, uh, you know, interested in specific questions for your children, if you have one or two of different age groups, then I would really recommend join the workshop because yes, here Neeti has been answering all the questions also for all of you, and that's the point of doing this live. But if there are more detailed questions which you want to ask specifically about your child and this topic. which you are not able to ask on a social media platform then please please uh, do join the workshop uh, it is just one and a half hours for three days three nights rather 8:30 to 10 pm which is also suitable for my followers who are in the us working um, or other places right now let me continue with the question so bubbles is saying how can we teach our children about good touch and bad touch a very generic question but neeti is that something you can answer here <sighs> it would be a little tough because first yeah. you need to understand uh see good touch and bad touch we've seen millions of videos and we've seen millions of uh, you know articles talking about it so just simple information you already know even as a as a human being you know that okay do not touch your uh, do not touch yourself in front of public do not touch others don't allow anybody else to touch you but there is a specific way to teach your child because you want to keep the body positivity also in place so for that yes. uh, that will become a little tough to answer here uh, because i spent 3 hours explaining this topic to parents so just to tell you in short keep the body positivity like for example saying um, your body is very beautiful and functional it serves you very well you need to protect it and then teach them why it's sensitive then how to protect it how to yell how to run who to go to so all this kind of becomes a bigger it's, topic it's a too long, it's a process it's a like very pro- a very so people you can answer like on a chat or a comment in fact lot of parents say that bas wahan se bhag jana are bhag ke jayega kahan bachcha that also you have to tell them ha ah. you yes, know correct, where correct, where correct. because that is where the confusion comes in for a child that if i leave from here where do i go and that is all happening at the back of the head it's not like a very conscious thought so these are the kind of things that we prepare our parents like give them specific instructions tell them what needs to be done where what are the very minimal thing that your child needs to know like phone numbers addresses so you know there's a lot one parent needs to first and learn and also age appropriate right like you have said also age appropriate uh, always you your workshops that age because how you deal with a 3 year old will be very different from very a 7 8 10 year very old different. from a 15 year old so i think that's yes. where it is important to do it in a more focused way absolutely of either uh, you know her talks or uh, workshops or whatever so one question that i think you can answer is uh, is it important to educate about this important part as soon as the child is about to start play school like what is the ideal age a couple of parents are asking here so yes so this is where the sexual develop understanding the sexual development helps so during the play group age they are more uh, interested in playing there are role plays you know the doctor doctor the home set uh, sometimes mm. they are lifting each other's clothes mommy, they are papa, pulling pants down mummy papa because they see mummy papa exactly. and sleeping Yes. So, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So those kind of things are going to be the role plays for them at this age. And there are certain behaviors like the kissing on the cheek or hugging or calling them darlings. So in today's times, honestly I'm telling you, uh, children start talking about marriage from junior kg. They are only oh modeling, okay? They have no understanding of it. it's just like ha huh, now you are my girlfriend we'll get married when we get, when we grow older and parents sometimes take it as a joke and they tease their children which is again not okay but uh, just to help you understand there are many things but that we have to but we have one minute fairy tales also talk about the prince kissed the princess and you know woke her up from a slumber and absolutely then, so it is very it is very weird that all fairy tales usually about yes. are about girl and boy getting married eventually and you know the girl and happily living and after beautiful and happy so i mean we can't blame the children right if you understand no. it's different thing if you are making them listen to you know some uh, mythology and all but at the end of the day these fairy tales and all are about rupanzel and sleeping beauty and cinderella everything is about getting the guy and you know getting yes. married so how can you blame the kids So fairy tales have also evolved over the years. The fairy tales were not yeah. how they are. They no 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 no. The bad ones have evolved from the good ones. So I won't call them good also. So earlier the princesses were very fierce. They were very uh, you know strong. That was a picture. 
and slow and steady i think somewhere the patriarchy took over and it's become all about the boy now but i think it's a great idea to ask your child do you think somebody can wake up just by a kiss start allowing them teach them to think teach them to think this these are the these are the ways you help a child to think and tell them you know darling you, this is a story it's not true i would say just don't read it read the good parts of uh, cinderella you know how mavi swami's like mom used to give me stories the ones that i that fit into that situation and there's <laughs> context to it so that is how you have to give stories you know there has to be a context to it and if you're reading stories to your children at night make sure that they are more moral based value based rather exactly. than uh, subconscious programming fantasy time, na so let it not be the very fantasy based let them be real let them teach them and night is such a vulnerable time for a child uh, you know they are very very vulnerable they will cha- they will talk to you the most at night before sleeping they will open up to you the most at night when they are sleeping so that that time that you spend you know 10 minutes 15 minutes with a child when they are sleeping it's the best time to talk to your child uh, so this is the time when you kind of mold them so yeah 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 so i'll also add my two bits to it that when we look at the yes. structure of the mind you know conscious subconscious the subconscious mind of course in small children up to 3 it's everything is subconscious which means whatever yes. said even in humor and sarcasm goes straight in and literally goes straight but even as yes. they continue to grow up even for adults you know just before we go to sleep our brain when we are sleeping our brain waves are in delta which is a kind of a brain wave signal uh, which is measured by some machines on our heads now when we are in a deep sleep state we are not receptive to any suggestions but before just before we go to deep sleep our brain goes through the alpha theta brain waves and that is when most suggestions go inside because our subconscious mind is most receptive to whatever you are exposed to when your brain is in alpha theta it's a trance like state and we naturally go in that state just before we go into deep sleep and just before we wake up in the morning yes. same for children yes. so bedtime yes. stories are so important because all your subconscious reprogramming really happens there so you might want to tell them bedtime stories that you know that that are empowering that are positive that are filled with the principles and values that you yes. want to give your child mm, versus you know things like you know being kissed on the lips and waking up from slumber and you know those kind of things i mean i'm just saying that uh, even even for children who have fears and don't want to go to school we have tried with many parents who have whispered certain positive yes. suggestions in their yes. ears before bedtime and uh, yes. the children are able to go to school so it's a great time for children to reprogram their mind just before they go to sleep so neerthi brought out a very beautiful point that that is when you want to really tell them stuff that sticks yes okay and as parents you decide what goes it does does the netflix series go in or uh, you know does the discovery channel goes in or do your value systems go in do parents i remember for my kids um, gunjan used to every time even if he had work he would have that one hour and he would tell them kind of crazy stories okay but really stories that would make them laugh and i would be like hey they are supposed to be bored and go off to sleep so then i would take over and i would tell them stories that would get them so bored and sleep off you know <laughs> this is a great yeah. time to uh, work with your kids and i think yes. long after they grow up they remember that parents oh they do oh they do it, it, all that nice you're doing thing. all that you're doing right now for your children is an investment and you are going to reap all the dividends and yeah, interest yeah, yeah. later so, so bedtime stories is a very uh, something you should take seriously and don't leave them to devices but use yeah. that time to reprogram your child with more positive suggestions so yeah. sushmita saran is saying my question is from class 9 or 8 they are doing lip kissing school what one yeah. should make them aware of uh, for this so, so for 8 and I mean, yeah Mm. How, how so for, like? yeah so for 8th and 9th it is more about uh crossing boundaries uh the rebellious nature uh, because you've said no of course they are already sexually active you know i mean hormones have kicked in bodies are developed uh, so that is where the attraction is also there so i think it is very rather than saying don't do it it's wrong they don't understand that so initially when riri was talking about you know the logical brain and the you know the reasoning uh, the reasoning brain very quickly i'll tell you what it is this is the part of our brain like completely from the base of the head till here right so our brain is inside 
what happens with the brain is they start developing from the bottom from behind of the head and then it comes in the front so the feeling part of it there are some some spaces which uh which control or uh, it's operative the feelings are there okay which is right in the middle of the brain inside that is developed before the logic which is right here in the frontal cortex so when the feeling side of the brain is developed that is where they operate from anything that yeah. feels good they will do it anything that feels bad they want it out of their life it's as black and white for them so if you are expecting them to take logical uh, um, you know decisions they cannot okay. not because they don't want to they cannot and that is because this part of the brain develops the last which is around 20 years of age so please don't be in a hurry because they've grown taller they've grown fatter you think physically they've grown big they are big they are not big yet <laughs> mentally they are still going to take some time to start making logical decisions of course some children a little early some children a little late but keep your patience so they will act out of feeling so 8th and 9th grades when they are kissing uh, one is there's a lot of pornography going on uh, you know in between children they are watching it together and mobile phones are with them i mean it's absolute free access to them that's one reason two attraction is there and they know this is the next step to take so already the hormones are in certain place where they do feel a uh, a very high sexual energy which makes them do things also and this is not their time to control every time so not mm. not that i'm taking their side or defending them helping you understand what they go through but at the same time when you keep hitting with the moral morals with them that this is not okay at this age i understand you're going through it i know you will want to feel like it but you cannot please understand what can happen if you do and that is where the lessons are learned some children will understand some children will not listen to you so keep a very close eye uh, on your children don't blindly just say that my children will not do anything you will not you know believe what? you know what also i have seen neeti that uh, if you don't give mobile phones to your child you protect it your child will go to that friend there will always be yeah, 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 yeah. in the class who has access to everything right there will always absolutely. be that kid and that absolutely kid is the most popular kid because the others don't have access and he has access or she has access to everything so in fact it is extremely difficult for us to really keep 100% tabs on these things because your child will say i'm going to play at a friend's place and now he's going to that friend's place who is getting yes. all the stuff that you have not allowed your child to get so anyway the child is getting exposed unfortunately in right? fact a- really they don't even have to they don't even wait to go to somebody else's houses their grandparents phones their maids phones the house help phones every child is using every phone that can come into their hand and they're very um, super smart to know how to delete histories also so do not think my child doesn't know anything they probably know a little bit more than you do so 100% uh, they are the generation they can fool us any day i know any that day. even the 5 year 6 year olds you know we may be wiser but we are not smarter when it comes to Smart technology, technology. we are born in technology which we yes. are we are late adopters right so absolutely yeah, absolutely so these are the reasons so it is very important to teach uh, talk to them about the consequences tell them what can happen uh, if if they come together from every angle legal angle you know a society angle uh, they are own physical angle they are emotional angle the pregnancy angle there are so many uh, different things that you can tell them but it's important to talk to them can't don't blame them for what they feel and what they are acting upon just help them understand that why we are telling you to stay a little away or behave in a certain manner and be the yeah. you know be yeah. the well mannered children in a way if i have to put in that to it i think last last live also i had said that you know i have so many adult clients who are blocked sexually because yeah. of the parents extreme reaction to this so the parents yes. must have caught them you know indulging in sexual play or the parents must have caught them at the age of 3 and 4 and they and they given them such horror stories and such yeah. horrifying graphic uh you know uh, yes. fear based descriptions of things that these children have got like blocked for life some of them like they yeah. say that we have those you know those visual memories even haunting us at the age of 30 and 40 like mother said you know somebody got raped and this is what happens and all i mean so yeah. as parents i think 
it is important to not over react and not let your fears take over when you are dealing with these topics which yeah. if you can't deal then don't do anything but at least don't take any extreme where you know you are either starving yeah. for life because i know mothers who have punished like i have one client who said that my mother made me uh, you know go in front of god and pray and said i have sinned and i will never touch my private parts again and you know mother must have caught the little one playing and uh, that 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 person said that all my life i have had a block with sex and yeah. masturbation because yeah. i was made to feel so shameful and so shameful i did the biggest yes. crime So yes. I think parents also we have to be a little bit uh, you know like take a deep breath and okay yeah. <laughs> okay you know and then reach out for Niyati's uh, you know, <laughs> and see if she has any tip on how to handle this really <laughs> no genuinely I'm saying this uh, every parent needs to remember the lesson they are giving their children when their children are fearing. when your child yeah. fears about something you give them the lesson that only when you face your fears only when you do it only when you know when you go in for it like go head on and then the fear will go away it's the same for you if you are fearing something that what are they doing and i don't know just educate yourself that's all you need to do you don't yeah, have to yeah. go bungee jumping or you don't have to you don't <laughs> really you don't have to do all that just just educate yourself you will be in such an amazing space with your children imagine imagine this your children coming to you in their teens uh, you know post teens uh, when they are getting married when they want to have children this is what we are thinking do you have any suggestions this is what we did do you think we were doing okay or not nobody will nobody will share very intimate details with you but there will be suggestions that they will they will hold you here that my parents talk to me about this i don't think there is anything more that i would want my children to come and talk it would be such an uh, in in a way honor in a way you know like okay i gave this to my children that they can ask and they can talk very nice so Wonderful. go for it absolutely uh nk freelance something something long name saying one more important part is so this is a very important question this person has asked we as parents never change clothes in front of our kids and teach them the swimming suit rule which means private part should be covered so is this really how it should be because again i'm questioning because i have lived in japan for 5 years right where there's a onsen culture so in japan i know that mothers and daughters and women would be going into these public baths without a shred of clothing on them so for example and even small uh, so so male female public baths are different so so my kids have grown up seeing nude my daughter has seen nude women from the time she was a little baby right uh, and it was very normalized but even small like little kids who are 2 and 3 up to a certain age go with their mums so my question is like this person has like said that in our culture we don't change clothes in front of our kids there's something called like hiding your private parts or shame but there are cultures where this is very very normalized in fact in yes. the, if i took my daughter to the gym in the swimming pool in a public swimming pool community swimming pool also in the in the swimming pool changing rooms or in the gym the women are just uh you know going around uh without any clothes so yeah. is this in your opinion like where how do we handle this is it absolutely no no how do we educate do we do please please throw light on yeah 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 you can uh, rivi can you okay there it's gone so um what used to happen earlier so i have also been with my grandmother uh, and my mother like especially because you know uh, when we go for a pilgrimage you know palitana and everywhere mm. where we mm. are all together the women have their own separate section everybody is changing there everybody is taking a mm. shower there are common areas mm. of showers but i have mm. grown up also to see different bodies different bodies of different women so i think when it becomes a community activity it's okay but when it becomes a one person thing that can be a little troublesome because what happens is you only see one body now if a now these are all speculations in a certain way uh, we have seen and we have experienced the truth of it the honesty of it the reality of it that yes when the children are young they do get attracted to their parents of the opposite sex like the son get attracted to the mothers the daughters get attracted to fathers which is true it's scientifically physiologically true uh, it's not that they are planning to sin or anything like that it's just physiological if i can explain that to you but at the same time when these communities you know when we are all together and everybody is minding their own business there are no other activities going on but it's okay to be uh, in your community and you know so see it's very all normalized. these it's very normal very very normalized like, you know, very so, 
yeah so that is why i think the mothers are very um, open and very it comes very easy to them when they have to talk to their daughters but they can't talk to their son Haan. because it's not normalized right their bodies yeah. are not normalized yes, for absolutely. us absolutely no no i agree i agree i agree and communities have their own reasons to keep us separate at certain times so especially when we are naked especially when all of this but then there are foreign cultures which we are exposing our children to where there are nude beaches when there are uh, you know beaches where uh, women are wearing bikinis there are so many different things happening so i think it's yeah. just a matter of yeah. giving them different perspectives so should you change clothes in front of your children i think after 6 7 years you can avoid it because that is what you want to teach them to continue later in society that don't change with just anybody uh, but sometimes no, if you have to be in a community space and uh, you know there are there are certain places you can but there are certain places you must not so if you are four people right. in the room don't but if you are 40 people in the hall it's okay you know that right. that is right. how somewhere yeah. it should be so i see young parents is telling the younger girl you know, when they're about 5 6 years of age when 5 6 years of age that, that why are you feeling so shy it's okay to change here it's all aunties only it's gabi only but you don't understand you were the same mother who told her not to change in front of everybody yeah. so that is very important for us to understand that we are conflicting also you know we are kind of like giving them to different messages that yeah so that is something we need to understand but at the same time so i would say uh, distinguish tell them if we are so many don't do it but if we are many and it's women or only men and it's normal then do it so they need to understand that where it's okay and where it's not yeah 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 I mean, yeah i mean i recollect i recollect japan, uh, japan it, was uh, it was very different uh, for us in the for us in the beginning but that we all got used to it you know like, you know, like yeah, we yeah. wouldn't even we think wouldn't like, like, like so it was so normal, normal for my daughter and me like, like, like yeah but i, I cannot tell you uh, I, yeah i cannot tell you really how grateful i am for my mom my grandmother to raise me the way they did uh, for them it was a religious angle but i think what i also picked up was so much of normalization about talking about these things so my grandmother used to call me like at least twice a week into the bathroom to scrub her back you know she's like ah, okay come 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 yes i have done that yes. my grandmother too done that yeah. done that yeah. and it was so yeah. normal to yeah. do that for your grandparents to do it for my mom so my grandmother for 22 years and i have given her the bed pan and i have cleaned her i have done all that you know so i think so these kind of activities yeah these kind of activities bring that normalcy into the whole thing and not everything is sexual you have no, a body I, multiple I, things are going to happen to you i think it's time we draw a line somewhere and not put everything under the bracket of sex you know i think i think uh, even the nuclear family system has done away with some of these things yeah, like i remember yeah. i have my my grandmother was there like you rightly said uh, when you said it i remember yes we used to give her a bed pan we used to uh, my mom used to scrub her and you know uh, yeah uh, yeah you know give her a bath and we used to be a part of that so it was not very uh, even no. our bodies were not yeah i agree okay shikhar uh, is asking a question do we need to tell a 13 14 year old child to tell him about masturbation before they have experienced it him himself or should we wait before he gets to know about it himself i would say before i will always say before so get them ready because masturbation is again not just a definition that you're going to tell them you're going to tell them why it may happen what he may do what he may not do uh, or she for that matter it's not just about the boys uh, telling them about safety talking to them about hygiene uh, you know so all that matters so talk talk beforehand and just don't one day sit down on the dining table and say hey listen i want to talk to you today and start the topic it's very embarrassing <laughs> it's super like, oh yeah 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 they are, it's super Dhati embarrassing for them <laughs> absolutely so i think it will be great to either say that listen today i want to talk to you about something different or be ready i want to talk to you about something different or bring some context to it or i read this book and they were talking about it and i thought we should also have a talk so bring some context to it bring some situation to it it will become a little better uh, it will be like you know jor ka jhatka dheere se lage type of thing um yeah they don't like it like suddenly you start talking about sexual topics positivity live is saying how will we know that they've already started with all of that like very good question i would have the same question too if you have educated your child why do you want to know that 
करेक्ट so so I I I wish I knew you. <laughs> like, I mean, I knew you 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 like mean but I didn't know know about this this topic when my my kids were young so, this is for all my followers you know, I'm hosting Niyati twice again all over so, because I have missed this part with my kids. with kids daughter I must have done a little bit of it much later but um, uh, I have missed some of these milestones with my kids simply because like I said I was not aware I didn't have the resources I was not prepared and hence I'm doing this so that you guys don't miss this out today at when they are much older I am still more comfortable talking Talking about it, yes. they want to run away. <laughs> oh, I know. God, uh, you know everything. There's a video about it. What are you going to tell us today? Today, somebody told me this new word. I must say while it came up, you know. So there is relationship. Then there was this other word. So no, no, I forget. Oh my God, I forget. There's a new word, you know, which they have come up with. Instead, of, there is a something called being in a relationship. There's something called a, a third word. I I forget. I must uh, ask her and put this up on my post because. this new generation comes up with all these new words you know and it's like wow i didn't know this anyway, there is a lot of slang so yes, just finishing yes. that question just finishing that question one yes. you have to understand these are very private moments and usually these are not the things we discuss with parents what you can do is one first prepare them for it make sure that you've repeated it two three times because again one time nobody remembers and maybe after a couple of years or when you think you know he or she is 16 18 and you have certain concerns you can ask about the concern don't ask whether do you masturbate or not it's a very very private question and you will not be able to answer that if somebody asks you that right uh, even uh, so you know imagine your parent asking you not every parent is as open But imagine your parent asking you, "Oh, so are you having sex yet? Like, are you okay with your husband or wife?" <laughs> It's going to be very, very awkward. So we don't discuss all these things like out loud in public and like a normal conversation. Teach them right. Have faith in them. Let them know they can come back to you whenever they have questions. And maybe in once in a six months or something, you can always go back and check. Hey, do you have any questions? I had taught you that, but I was just wanting to, uh, you know, make sure that you are in okay space. Then again, you can, you know, after a year or you can say, Are you okay? Is there something you need to help? So be be nice. Yeah, you know? just be nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get that. And and respect question. their privacy. Yes. last question for today's live because i think you've answered so many questions already um m joshia fale is saying my child is 10 he has started talking about sex talking about girlfriends and like holding their private parts ju- like just start of masturbation and peer pressure also building up what should i do here and uh, i think somebody else was saying my son is 16 and he's asking if he can have a girlfriend so how do you really handle these things I've not understood the first question very well. Um, holding each other's private parts, and is he asking for permission? Is he saying that he wants to do it, or what is it? Is he generally having a discussion? So your your response will be, you know, based on that. Um, the second question about a sixteen year old saying, "Can I have a girlfriend?" Um, my response to my child will be, "Yes, you can," hmm. but I would leave it at that for that moment. because i don't want to ruin the moment for him but at the same time maybe after a few days i would question where the question is coming from is there a girl he's ah. already attracted to is there somebody mm. he likes but not yet approach what is the situation what's going on in his mind just to to understand him better and to guide him better so at that moment i would say yeah you sure i won't be i won't get very excited about yeah yeah of course you must and this <laughs> is the time <laughs> ha ah, don't give all that encouragement you will cry oh later just be very okay to say yeah absolutely you can and let me know whenever that happens it will be great to know you know more about you and leave it at that but then later you can ask so what's happening you were asking me about it did anything happen is there somebody in your mind it's you know you know how moms can be or how dads can be just curious about your life so that way you can have a conversation with them and figure out a little more of what's going on but uh, be very okay to tell them it's okay yeah yeah well yeah thank you for my god i i also need to come for your uh, class <laughs> like <laughs> okay most rather I'm, i'm sorry rather than a question if you could uh, point across not to take children to the theater i'm sorry i don't agree with this i think ch- taking the children to the theater is not a problem but take them to age appropriate movies because absolutely um yeah i mean 
taking them to the theater or if you don't take them to the theater they'll go to theater at some point anyways uh, the point is the theater is not the problem the content is a problem so yes yes uh, make sure you take them to if it's a pg13 then only take them you know uh, accordingly if it's a 16 plus then only take them if they are above 16 and 18 plus so there are there are certifications so, given by the board for absolutely but the board also has its own limitations so what we do usually among our friends is if somebody seen the movie or we all we talk to two three people whether our children can mm. watch this movie or not we mm. read about mm. the movie even though it's killing our uh, you know all the fun about knowing the movie or anything but if i am planning to take my child to any movie not only sex and nudity is what i see i also check for violence i also check for foul language of yes. how much of it you know uh so those yeah. are the kind of things uh, i do check before but now my children are of course now older one is 18 no. one is 11 so even with a 11 one old 11 year old it becomes i do check for violence i do check for the level of uh, you know or intensity of nudity and uh, sexual content but some movies i do take that opportunity to teach her further like okay mm. see this happened but you know in real life this is not how it is this is how it is so of course we don't have couples dancing around the trees anymore but they are doing much more so i have yeah, to talk yeah, to yeah. her at some time and i think right now developing her mind to understand the right way of doing things i can already see when she comes back to say that they were talking about all these things and i was like did you did you say anything further because she's way more she has a lot of knowledge you know having a mother who talks about this topic day in day out so she doesn't have talk a lot of therapy of, <laughs> exactly exactly so she does have a lot of knowledge but she knows that this should go only from a parent or a teacher to the students and i am not allowed to talk or i should not talk so i i feel safe i'm like okay then it's okay yeah, it's between yeah. me and you and uh, this is something literally between me and my kids my husband also sits takes a back seat and he'll be like i'm listening <laughs> because some parents are just okay talking about it yeah, and some yeah. parents I might i think all parents have to talk about it i think those yeah yeah in my case also i have done whatever talking i had to do with both the kids yeah yeah because he also like you said he he's like no if you are comfortable you do it and that's fine no, he he does he does he does come in later on once i've started the conversation <laughs> he gets the flow he'll come in he's like ha ha see exactly what mom is saying now let me explain it to you which is very sweet because i love it when we all are sitting and discussing yeah. and talking and so it's all like that yeah, yeah yeah so i think it's time to end the live but one last question which i found very interesting because i've also posted about this in a couple of my reels which is uh, uh, should we worry about uh, so shikhar uh, s underscore somebody is asking should we worry about young siblings of 13 years age sleeping in the same room at night or do they need to be put in separate rooms i still feel they don't have anything physical on their mind so one i would like to i mean i don't know i could be wrong neeti is the best person but i would also like to say that i think sleeping according to me sleeping in the same room shouldn't be a problem but sleeping on the same bed very close could be a problem i don't know neeti what is your point of view on this so it's a is very very thing of teens yeah so it's a very very thin line um of course uh, you know um incest is not uncommon um yeah. it's happening and uh, sexual bodies don't recognize relationships they just recognize bodies okay uh, so that's a that's a fact that physiologically that's a fact so if ever if the siblings don't have a very wide age gap if you can see that both are growing up and all then it's okay to uh, ask them to say that you know maybe we should sleep in uh, different rooms or it so incest is a even more taboo topic to talk about suggesting that there might be a relationship between a brother and a sister but explain if you've had conversations before it may not be so bad to tell them that you know at the end of the day this is physiology so i wouldn't want you uh, both to you know come together in such a setup because of so and so x y z you know because all the reasons and scientific reasons because at night exactly accidentally you know the hand may go on the girl's breast or you know uh, absolutely is a uh, uh, penis and things may just start accidentally absolutely but we don't absolutely. know when it would lead to something else and i would always yes. say the same thing for parents sleeping with teenage kids like i of the opposite sex i mean when i posted this i had got like many many comments about saying oh what makes you think same sex also can't be abusive and blah 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 but the general 
guideline is that in my opinion that suppose if you are say a father and you are sleeping with a 13 year old daughter of yours i am not questioning either of you but one doesn't know what might happen at you know by mistake or uh, it's good to kind of i don't know sleep in the same room is okay but i don't know if i would be encouraging them to sleep on the same bed sleep on the same bed or, or, so or when when we are Mother, yeah. Son, 14, 15. Uh, when when we are talking about teenagers themselves, we know that their logical brain has not developed, and they will go behind what they feel like, and they're more spontaneous yes. and instantaneous. But with parents, I would say it is uh, it is it is the it's the job of the parent, it's the responsibility of the parent to make sure that they know how to conduct themselves with their children. And if you are not if that parent is not they are not going to wait for that child only to sleep on their bed they are going to go and abuse that child any which ways so most of the parents no that is true no that is true neeti but i have seen that accidentally it has i have had clients who are victims you have clients which is why i have had yeah clients. yeah father, are you coming out of experience or, yeah 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 even mothers like sometimes there is a very thin line between you know like where there is lack of awareness like you know like a 14 year old yes. son sucking the mother's cheeks or a 14 year old son giving the smooch to the mother on the lips now yeah. it happens once yeah. it happens twice but if this is repeatedly happening then for me yeah. as a therapist i think there is something wrong here it's not really healthy i mean not to judge but there are sexual connotations which people are not aware of sometimes you know and i think I don't know. I mean, I would always so, avoid these situations. I mean, father mother me to trust hota hai, but samjho agar aap relative ke yahan gaye ho, aur aap yeah, so that too we are usually so, yeah. Mosi, Mosi, Fufi ke saath agar so raha hai room. No, I think be, yeah. Be so I'll tell you something. These relationships, sexual re- sexual relationships between relatives, is more of a society setup than actual about anything else. The reason why we discourage uh, same blood. not relatives i'm talking same blood to have sex is only because of the scientific consequences that may happen later not to the people but if there are any offsprings or if there are children they may kind of carry the genetics from the same bloodline and it's more, there are more chances that they are carrying all the diseases and they're carrying all of it from both the same bloodline so that was main reason of why we keep the bloodlines differently and then so it was all about the 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 offsprings that we would have this moral about not sleeping with parents or siblings or cousins or anything is more about the society setup so science is not saying anything else science is saying just be no, careful no it's not even moral yeah not even moral but i would just say from the point of view of abuse possibility of abuse and incest that's all Risk. that's what i'm saying if 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 the if any true. child who is not 18 years and is is being used for any sexual gratification it's sexual abuse as that's simple as that correct as correct. simple as that whether well, she was okay it. at 16 or whether she was not okay at 16 or whether he was okay at 17 or not till they are not 18 and till they don't give consent it is sexual abuse at the end of the day so that is period there's no two ways about it but just in case even after 18 if there is consent uh, between two people in our law in our uh, culture in our society it's a no no it's yes, a no no yes, yes that's that's what we want to keep in mind it's a no no but what i just wanted to bring out see this is what sex education is about actually understanding why we are saying no sabko pata hai no hai but why are we saying no Q. so ah, this is what q ha so this is what it basically was that from the same bloodline you're just more prone to having all of the same okay. kind of things and then your children having it and you know those kind of things uh, right. but then yes we have our own borders and boundaries that we've created for ourselves which are respect with that i think it's 10 oh my god in our life kaha time jata hai pata hi nahi chalta hai question nahi chalta hai jao karte jao karte ho ek ghanta ho gaya hai uh, i think it's time to wind up but i would really like to thank neeti from the bottom of my heart thank you so much my pleasure uh, and uh, my pleasure all my followers who have been on this live i would like to say that please mark the date 6th 7th and 8th of september 8:30 to 10 pm is the workshop on powerful tips for sex educating your child and it is conducted by neeti online so if you wish to join it uh, please uh, watch out on my space i will be sharing the poster as well as the link of that workshop with you
it is not a free workshop it is a paid workshop all the details are over there it is entirely conducted by neerthi who is a sex educator and a, um, uh, yeah an intimacy coach she is an expert in this field not me and hence she is going to be doing this through and through and i am really really i have requested her to do this simply because uh, of my followers who have so many questions about this and i think genuinely need help so uh, thank you so much for this lot of people are saying thank you so much thank you so much uh, neerthi i see the comments you are able to see the comments i am not i am not somehow i wish so i would great information stop thank you both of you thank you they are all saying it was a best live i have joined lovely Pooja is saying thank you for the information. Nice session, love it, love it. Lot of hearts, lot of kisses. To you. yes, <laughs> somebody had said you are the two best coaches, mentors I have had. On <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think uh, Isha says this is the best live I am a part of. A lot to learn from both of you. Keep following us, Isha. Keep learning. Mm, uh, wonderful, everyone. So good night. Uh, take care and. Uh, is there on instagram on your page yes so neerthi is on instagram and uh, i will make her a collaborator on this live so uh, but, uh, but uh, the the workshop uh, details will also be there on my page so um, uh, please watch out the space for the next one week i will be posting reels and more information on the workshop that she is doing so thank you sushmita saran i hope your question was answered adequately if not you know where to go um good night everybody good night take care thank you neerthi thank you so much is there anything you would like to say to everybody before you sign off uh i think i've been saying this over and over and over <laughs> again that just don't 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 i don't i don't want to say don't just educate yourself it's genuinely a must in today's times specifically as parents otherwise you will feel so lost in a couple of years where your children will be so way ahead in doing things and you will not know where to start from whatever age your child is what i am going to teach yeah. is only skills i am going to take the development all the way to 18 years so please join in um, not because just because we want our workshops to be a success it's going to be any which ways but my intention here i came in as a parent i want to be a parent when i talk to you and even in the lives you will see that we constantly talk about our lives our children <laughs> so it is not a very technical very uh, you know oh this is like 1 2 3 4 5 it's genuinely out of the heart we want to share what we know so please join in and don't hesitate with this topic it's a must great good night everybody good night people good night bye bye bye